So my name is Jessica Carl. I'm a physician assistant and I work at Rush University Medical Center in Chicago and particularly in the movement disorder section of neurological sciences. A little bit of the background first. So what is Huntington's disease in general terms? Um, it's a progressive neurodegenerative disorder. So it's characterized by progressive dystonia, chorea, Parkinsonism, as well as several different cognitive issues and psychiatric issues. And in the literature, there really isn't that much um, known about deep brain stimulation and Huntington's disease. There's a little bit about chorea, the choreic phenotype of Huntington's disease, and DBS is a treatment option for that, but really not the dystonic phenotype, which is what our aim of the project was, or the case report, rather. So a little bit about the patient. So he was, um, he's 66 years old when he presented to us, and he had a 30-year history of Huntington's disease. Um, and the last 10 years before he came to our clinic, he started to develop this disabling truncal dystonia. So really like back arching and really throw him out of his seat. Um, he was unable to sit in a chair. He couldn't have dinner with his family. He couldn't go to the movie theater. He couldn't really partake in any activities of daily living. And this movement was present sitting. That was the most severe, but also standing. So it really got in the way of his balance and walking and um, led to many different falls. Um, and it also, um, even while he was lying down, so he couldn't get to bed at night. So he presented to us because he had failed several different medications. Um, he had bilateral paraspinal botulinum tox toxin injections in his back, and none of this really helped. So he came to us to see if DBS was a potential option. So we really looked at this patient, um, as we do all of our patients, uh, as a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, you know, before this was our first patient with Huntington's disease that we even considered surgery for. Um, but we decided that because primary indication was the dystonia, that we would go ahead with the surgery. So we implanted a couple of years ago bilateral GPI DBS uh, for this patient, and approximately one month after the surgery, we started simulation. Very basic programming parameters to start, but really within two weeks, he noticed significant improvement in his movement. So the uh, result was quite immediate. Um, we did tinker with the stimulation parameters for over six months or so, um, but really two weeks, four weeks, he was really uh, doing quite well after stimulation was initiated. Um, so he was able to sit in the chair like I had said. Um, he was able to do different things with his family, um, and his quality of life really improved. Um, we, so we uh, repeated several different preoperative scales that we did uh, before surgery, just looking at quality of life, uh, patient independence, caregiver burden, and really a lot of this, and then we repeated that two years after surgery um, to see if this was a maintained therapy. And it really, his quality of life definitely continued to be improved and maintained two years out, um, especially ability to do activities of daily living, just overall stigma. Independence was a little bit, uh, it was maintained, it wasn't necessarily improved because the disease is progressive, we're not dealing with something that's stagnant. So there were other things that did get a little bit worse, so it was independence to get a little bit um, worse or maintained two years later. But we also decided to bring the patient back two years after surgery and turn the stimulators off to see what would happen. Um, and within 30 minutes or so, the setting, or after the settings were turned off, uh, his movements did come back, although not as se severe as before surgery. Um, and we repeated different disabil or dystonia rating scales and the UHDRS, which is a Huntington's disease rating scale. And really the dyst dystonia and the off and the on state was significantly improved still, especially in the trunk and even his lower extremities, that movement improved as well. But I think the takeaway point for this is that we're not advocating DBS for every Huntington's patient, but the patient came to us and he had a primary complaint of dystonia that was really getting in the way of his quality of life. And dystonia, DBS is an indication for dystonia, so we were going to treat that with the stimulation. Um, and another thing about this particular patient is that his cognition was relatively maintained at the time of surgery. So before surgery, his mini mental um, state exam was 28 out of 30. Uh, so that really took, we took that into consideration as well before we were to implant this uh, gentleman with DBS leads and go through a major surgery like that. 
um, and also psychiatrically, he didn't have anxiety or depression or psychosis before surgery. So we took all of this into consideration. And the caregiver support, I think, is the last thing. He had a great family and support system. So brain surgery is, is not a light surgery. So I think all of those things together made him a good candidate for the surgery. So if people out in the community think of a patient similar to our patient, they should consider DBS. So our center is very big. Um, we have now, I think, 10 physicians just focused on movement disorders. So what I do and the few physicians that work with me, we don't actually see the Huntington's patients. We have a separate Huntington's clinic. So if they were to refer us for certain things like that, yes, we would consider it. But we have, the expectations for the patients is huge to set those expectations. We're not going to cure your disease. Uh, we're not going to help your balance necessarily or your chorea. But if you have a primary complaint that we know DBS can help, then sure. We haven't had anyone else come through, but <laughs> we would consider it.